Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our responsorial song is number 592, Your Words Are Spirit and Life. So I hope you saw or heard in, in our readings this, this common theme. When Mrs. Radcliffe read from the Acts of the Apostles how, how Paul and Silas got thrown into jail and then there was this earthquake and, and the doors got thrown wide open, the jailer woke up and, of course, he was scared and shocked. He just lived through an earthquake and he saw the open doors and his first reaction was to think that they had escaped and he was going to kill himself. It was his first reaction, his gut reaction to a bad thing that had happened, at least in his perspective. And then did you hear 
in the gospel how Jesus' own disciples, they're filled with grief because he's told them that he's going to go back to the Father. Grief, their first reaction to this, 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 this news that Jesus is going to leave them. But in both cases, something really, really spectacular happens right afterwards. Paul and Silas call out, hey, don't do anything, we're here, and, and, and it ends up that the jailer and his whole family become believers, and they're baptized, and they have breakfast, and, and everything is great for them after that initial shock. And Jesus assures his disciples that, hey, if I don't go, you can't get the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the gift that's yet to come is going to fill you in on all things. And so we have to get through those, those, those rough spots. And we all have rough spots in our lives at various times. But by being people of faith and staying the course and, and trusting that God, who is in control of all things, that God has a plan and God's care and God's will and God's power will help us get through great things lie in our future. That's the hope that keeps us going. That's the hope that motivates us. That's the faith that makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. And so even as we look at coronavirus, and, and as we look at all the things that have, have just turned topsy-turvy over the last couple of months, we're still a confident people. We're still a faithful people because we know that God's in control. And God never lets his people go. So now we're going to have Mrs. Rafflet's daughter, Jillian, come forward and lead us in our prayers of the faith. Jillian, come on.
great friends, that we each our single offers of bread and wine may become that acceptable in the eyes of God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Father, grant that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. May we lift them up to the Lord. Then let us together give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times and at all places to acclaim you father but in this easter season of the fall to praise you even more gloriously as we recall your son our lord jesus christ has become our passover victory for with the old order destroyed a universe once cast down has been renewed and the integrity of life is restored to us in christ jesus Therefore, filled with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are. Father, 
as we celebrate his memorial of the saving passion of the old son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving for this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray on this oblation, the sacred offering of the church, and recognizing in the end the sacrificial victim by whose death he will be reconciled all of us to yourself. Grant that he who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we might obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph her husband, the apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. John the Baptist, St. Thomas Aquinas, and all those saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confer in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Jerome. The whole order of bishops with all clergy, religious, and the entire people who gained for the Lord. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who have assembled before you today, and in your compassion and merciful power, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all the pleasing who have the time of their passing from this life, give kind allegiance to your kingdom. For with them, in that kingdom, we hope one day to enjoy the fullness of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom you bestow on this world everything that is good. Through your memory, amen, O God, my Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit,
takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into heaven, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our recessional hymn is number 691, Sing and Mary. 